tell you about today. This is what we're gonna do. I was thinking about what should we do for our sketchbook number three. And I got the idea yesterday on my way back from picking Olivia up from Young People's Theater. And um, I want to bring in a little color in because I've been just drawing and uh, my whole concept behind this sketchbook summer is just these quick moments, simple supplies, and but I think you can be simple and um, work on some other techniques in your sketchbook. So I went to Arbor Farms. It's a little, a small grocery store in our neighborhood, and I had this idea that I wanted to draw a pear. And I was thinking about because I've been drawing a lot of flowers. I've seen you draw a lot of flowers and flowers are, are just very fun to draw because they're, you know, they're, they're natural and they're, you can kind of, you know, do your own thing with the petals. They don't have to be perfect in order to look like a flower. So I started thinking about, you know, organic um, subject matter versus man-made versus handmade and the differences that the different challenges we face as artists to draw those things. So I, um, one of the things when I started drawing with um, Carolyn Reed Barrett, she has these six lessons and you have to do those letter lessons no matter how, where you are in your drawing, you have to do those. And they're very smart, they're really great lessons. And the first one was drawing pairs. <laughs> so, um, because then she can kind of, it, there, it's a lot about form and space and line work, all those elements of style. And then she progresses through that. So on her website, she has um, the pair sketching and talking about it. It's very good. So it's a free, I think it's a little free video that's on her website. So if you have a chance to drop, jump over there um, and take a look at it. So I love pairs. I love to draw pairs. There's something very satisfying about the pear shape. And if you're studying line, negative space, there's so many different ways to take something like a pear or an apple or an orange and um, get a lot of information about it. It is, I find it, it's more satisfying to draw something organic than to draw something man-made, okay, or machine-made. All right, so I have that and I have this like little vintage bottle because of the symmetry of it and so there's a different approach to drawing something that is man-made and or machine-made and then there's also drawing something that's handmade that has a lot of imperfections in it which I think are beautiful now you can of course I would draw this and it would not be perfect it would be wonky which is okay I could spend a lot of time I could draw, use a ruler, I, and which is okay if you're drawing like a vase or a vessel and you want it to be perfect, you know, working on that block in, really spending a lot of time with it if that's what you want to do. But today's lesson is going to be about my pear, which I stood at the pear bin searching for the perfect pear. And I found this one because it's a very cute little shape. And I like that it still has this kind of cool, curvy, that curvy stem and the little leaf from the pear tree is still attached. And there is some really nice colorations in it. And there's like this little dent here. So I spent a lot of time looking for my pear. <laughs> so this is something you can do. And go outside of, you know, finding a flower or a leaf and go to the grocery store, go to the produce section and shake things up a bit and get an apple or a pear, but look for one that like, why do I want to draw this? And I was looking for certain things and I really wanted a pretty stem and I thought the stem was great. So yes, I know that the pear with a touch of pink, right? And we, they didn't have that pear there. They only had the Bartlett and then what is it? The, the, the brownish pear, I can't remember what it's called. Um, and I like those little mini pears too, but they didn't have any of those, but this was my choice. So when we're sketching, um, sometimes I like to bring, I like to keep it simple and just bring my, you know, charcoal pencil or piece of charcoal, Stabilo, something just very simple materials. But um, when you're out and about, or if you're going on a trip, sometimes it's nice to bring a little watercolor palette 
and I'm gonna, um, I have that out. So I'm gonna show you how to do just a very simple wash and to draw with your paintbrush and keep it very simple and loose. And if you happen to read my blog last week, I talked about the different line quality you can get by how you hold your pencil and the way your hand moves or your wrist, your elbow, bringing in gestural things. So what we're gonna do today is use one paintbrush and I'm gonna use a, is this, no, where's my Stabilo? There it is. I'm gonna use a little bit of Stabilo and have a mechanical pencil and I'm not gonna erase. So I want you to kind of watch this and see what I do. And this is such a great lesson to get past that perfection because you can't be it's watercolor and I'm not drawing I'm not erasing and who knows what it's going to come out to be but I'll show you the one I did before and I really like it and I have a little bit of a value I have a little bit of um, a shadow in there so I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to show you and I'll also show you what I worked on this week too so, yeah. all right I gotta let it let it be okay so what I worked on this week let me just show you all right I just did some little quick sketches and that's what I did in the video I think and then oh look at that big messy huge messy sketch there I was doing it very fast and um, just really pushing things around, trying to loosen up. And as you see, I don't care. I can just put white gesso over this and it will be a clean page. Um, then I started thinking about it more. I started um, working more on the details, a little bit of this, these peonies that I had. And here's another scribbly sketch. This one I really like. This one's kind of happening, it's more detailed. Um, so I was trying to make them bigger, trying to capture. I had some um, live peonies um, that I was using in the studio and um, I like some of the things. So I would just, I took pictures of them and I kind of zoomed in on my phone and this one's looking a little bit like an artichoke, but that's okay. So I think that's it in that book. I don't know if I did. I think I did one more iris in here. Let's see. Let me see, let's go back to my irises. Yeah, I did this iris here with a little bud, which I like. I like this paper, I have no idea what it is. It's kind of smooth, um, so I can like smudge things around a lot. So that's what I did there. All right, now let's go. This is the pair I did this morning. And I'm gonna do it again for you. It will definitely come out different. So I have this little peg and all, you know how I like them a lot. And the, they're Daniel Smith watercolors. I got these last summer. And so this is a great little set to, to bring with you. And then I have my pair. So I'm gonna set my pair over here and I'm gonna show you what I did. Alrighty. So what I have, let's see, I've got some water and I have this watercolor brush. It's a Princeton quill, it's by Neptune or it's Princeton Neptune and it's a six and it holds a lot of water. And then I have a Stabilo and a mechanical pencil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna look at my pair from over here and I'm gonna wet my brush and I have a paper towel too that I always use if I'm gonna do any watercolor. And I'm not a watercolor artist. I don't consider myself, you know, like I've seen watercolors who are amazing. All right, so I'm gonna look at my pair and I'm gonna draw with water. And I can't talk and do it at the same time. So I'm just kind of drawing. It's almost like doing a contour, just trying to get the shape and I'm not filling it all in. And then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna get this green and I'm just gonna, push that around. Uh, pull that over. And then if you get too much water in it, you just dry your brush off and then you can just roll out some water from your brush. Okay, now I'm gonna go up. This is a yellow ochre. This is a, um, I think it's a raw sienna. And so there's a little bit of that up at the top and I'm not trying to you know, make it perfect. 
push it around. And then there's a, a brighter green here that I might just try to get that brightness in a little bit. And then I have, I think this is paint gray. Let me test it out. Oh yeah, I like that. I just mixed paint gray with this olive green. Just do a little bit of shadow. So I'm very loose with this. And Okay, so now I'm gonna take my Stabilo, which is not even sharpened, and I'm holding my hand way back and I'm looking at this part here and how this little stem is happening. So I'm gonna go up to the top. I'm gonna start here and I'm just going to create my little stem. And it's gonna bleed into it, which I think is pretty. Then I'm gonna take my mechanical pencil and pull out that stabilo and create a leaf here. And then, and then I see a little um, cast shadow over here. I'm just gonna take a little bit here. It's gonna bleed up into it, that's okay. All right, so I have a simple, simple little watercolor drawing, if you will, little painting that you can do. This is a watercolor um, sketchbook that I have. I think it's a company called Etcher. Let's see, I liked this darker. And so it's blurring together a little bit, that's okay, I can just Play with my leaf. All right, now I wanna give it a little bit of a splatter. So I'm just gonna take this and I just splashed it all over my face. It's all over my face, just so you know, I felt it go all the way up and it's on my white t-shirt. That's what I get. <laughs> It's everywhere. I feel it everywhere. Oh my goodness. Let's take a little bit of this. Okay. And then my name and today is June something. I don't know what today is. June. I'll put 2022. Okay. Summer. Okay. So I can go back over this and play with it a little bit and but I like it. Let's look at the one I did before. I like this leaf better. That one came out a little bit more delicate. This one's kind of blobby, but I don't know if I can do anything about that. Let's see if I can do anything. I'm just rubbing out the, the water. Oh, there we go. Magic. All right, and above here, I can just kind of create a little color palette if I want to. If I can remember what I used. I used a little bit of this bright green and I have some Payne's gray and I have the Sienna. Okay, and then I can just kind of write a note, olive, Payne's gray, raw Sienna and green. I don't know what green this is here. It might be green gold. Okay, so there we have it. And you can, it, it didn't take me very long. It's very loose. It looks a little different than the first one I did, but I like it. I like the little splashes. I particularly like the splashes all over my white t-shirt right now. <laughs> so, so this is something that you can take your um, watercolor paints with you in a brush. So I only have one brush. That's all the tools I have. I don't have an eraser. And, you know, they have travel water brushes too. Um, I think I have one somewhere. I don't have it right here, but um, you can just do it with a water brush. But I think this is kind of fun just to put the, to draw with the water. All righty. So I'm going to show you one other thing. I'll put this over here to dry. Let me move this out of the way. Because I talked about drawing. You don't want this to sit in there because it ruins the the bristles will bend. So you just want to do this until you wash it. And then I have an empty 
vessel over here. All right, let me let me find some a page for you, and I'm just going to do a quick little demo while we're while we're here. So when you're drawing, there's different shapes of man-made objects, of course, right? There's things that are like cubes and cylinders and balls, and so that they're all very hard and they, if you're drawing them or practice drawing them, you can look at your line, you can look at the form, you can look at the, the lighting, the value range. But I'm just gonna show you um, a little trick when you're drawing something that, this is like my favorite yogurt. When you're drawing something that is like a, um, a cylinder, okay? No matter what the shape is, this is, you know, has that cylinder shape. So depending on how you're looking at it, so if you guys are looking at it like this, you can't see the other edge. But when I tip it, you start seeing this other edge. So we have to make like an ellipse. So depending on how I see it, if I'm looking at it straight on, I see a circle. But as I move it, it the circle becomes an ellipse, which makes sense, right? So when you're, I'm gonna pretend I'm looking at that. So here is my ellipse. And it's very hard to draw an ellipse freehand, for me anyway. So there's my bad ellipse. Now I'm going to draw a line down the center of it and just make sure that this side and this side are perfectly even, as much as I can get. All right, and there's that. Let's see, let me try to erase some of this so you can see it. All right, so there is my ellipse. And this one is the important one right now. So now when I'm drawing an object like a vase or a jar, I'm going to, and you can use a ruler to do this, but I'm not gonna do it for this. I'm going to draw a line down the center and hopefully make it in the middle. Okay, so here's the edge of my my little jar. Now, do you, this edge of the ellipse needs to match the bottom edge. All right, so that means I need to make another ellipse, even though I can't see the other side. So I'm going to eyeball it. All right, so there I draw a center line. It's pretty close, okay? Now for me, I, I don't want it to be perfectly perfect. Um, but if I spent a lot of time, I could get it very close. And if I wanted to do a still life with a very perfect vessel, then I would really measure, I would use my ruler, I would work on the block in and my ellipse and make my ellipse a little bit more perfect by measuring and being very fastidious about it. Okay, so now the next thing I do, here's the edge. And on this shape, it's kind of an interesting shape. It kind of goes into a bit and flares out and there's a rounded corner. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make it come to here so it flares out. I'm not gonna do the little indent of it. So now I have to eyeball. This is where I could use a ruler. Okay. Oh, that is a bad. See, now I need a ruler. That is bad. Okay. All right. So here's my edge. And this edge kind of has this cool bevel on the end here. So I want to try and pull that in. And then there's the lip, which kind of comes out. And it's going to keep playing with it until I find how I want it to look. So it all comes down to how you want it to look and feel. All right, so let me just erase some of this stuff here. And then you can go further and start shading it in. Let's see, so that you can get, I'm just gonna shade this in with a, now I only have one value here right now, this, all right. So I can spend a lot of time working on this. Let's see, do I have an eraser? And then I can start pulling out, I can see a little light, you know, start pulling out the light, 
making this edge disappear with doing hatch marks and building up my value. So you keep playing with the form so it stops being a line drawing and then I start bringing in more form to it. But it's gonna take me a lot of time to work on this. So if I'm doing that little lip on the edge, I have to make sure this matches the rim, that they're all exactly the same or it's not gonna look right. But you may want it to look flat. You may want it to be um, wonky and I kind of love wonky. All right, I work on this opposite edge, but you can see I keep cleaning it and adding more. Now, if I want it to be really beautiful, I would take this and I put a little yogurt in it and some strawberries on top and a little spoon and put it on a table and it could be a really pretty, well inspired. So what I'm trying to do here, and it's something that is a really challenging thing is to get rid of my line. And I have to keep working on the shading of this. Let me pull a little light in here. And there seems to be a little light up here. So you just kind of keep looking at your the, sh the shadow shapes that are in here. And pulling them out, look, there's a little light here. The light's bouncing off of these places. And so then I can keep cleaning it up. And I like to use the eraser to work on the edges. So that edge eventually turns, which is a, you know, a challenging time consuming thing to make that, that turn. And I like right now I'm going straight across, but then I will start going in with um, marks that will make it appear more round. That's what my goal is. As I continue to work on it, I can keep building up the value and trying to give it more form, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's something that is takes a lot of observation in looking at like, where's the light hitting? It's like when I look at it here, it looks different, but I don't know if you can see this. There are these, there's a dark, a darker line here, a lighter line, darker line. So I'm getting these kind of striations of light and dark. And if I were painting that, I would mix like this main red, then a darker red, then a lighter red, and start applying that to have that my object. And the same thing goes for my pair too. You know, I would mix the same colors up. I would try to get the pair to turn. All right, so now I just wanna bring in just a little, okay. So when you're drawing man-made objects, they are challenging and you have to make a decision. You have to choose whether or not you want it to be perfect. If you do, you have to like really work on your block in and let's put it in space here and and be very detailed about your angles and your ellipses. All right, so that's my little practice, my quick demo. Okay, all right, I'm gonna flip the camera around now. All right, so have a great weekend and I'll see you next week.